The 14th Dalai Lama is one of the most recognizable figures in the world, representing the people of Tibet through his leadership of the Tibetan government in exile. The life and teachings of Tenzin Gyatso have attracted millions of people, making him a figure who has garnered great international interest and admiration. He is the first Dalai Lama to travel to the West, helping spread Buddhism, as well as the plight of the Tibetan people under Chinese rule. The first Dalai Lama dates back to the late 1300s with a monk named Tsongkhapa who had many followers. He created a new Buddhist order focused on the purity teachings of the 11th century Indian teacher Atisha. Leadership of this group was passed on to Tsongkhapa's nephew, Jendon Drup, who worked to continue the traditions that his uncle had started. Jendon Drup was born to nomadic peasants and went to study and live at a monastery. He became one of the greatest scholars produced by his monastery and his fame spread all across t Tibet. Before his death in 1475, he declared that after his death he would be reborn as a Tibetan, leaving clues so his followers would find his success. It is this declaration of reincarnation which led to the institution of the Dalai Lama. The name Dalai Lama does not originate with Jendendra, but instead the third Dalai Lama. The title comes from the Mongolian ruler Altan Khan to Son Nam Gatso in 1578. The history of the 14th Dalai Lama begins in a manner similar to the previous 13. But very soon it becomes apparent that the life of Tenzin Gyatso is going to take a very different path than the previous Dalai Lamas. Lamo Dundal was born on July 6, 1935. His name meant wish fulfilling goodness. Early on in his life, there were signs that this was no ordinary boy. A pair of crows came to perch on the roof of the family's farmhouse. Buddhists believe that crows are the manifestation of a protective deity, Maha Kali. Crows have been associated with the births of the first, seventh, eighth, and twelfth Dalai Lamas. His mother commented, that the young toddler was always packing his clothes and little belongings, commenting that he was packing to go to Lhasa. When the 13th Dalai Lama died, a series of events was started, which would lead to the reincarnation of a new Dalai Lama. A search party arrived in the birthplace of Lahamo Dunda. This town had been visited by the 13th Dalai Lama, at which point he left a pair of boots, a sign that he would return. When they were in this town, they visited a boy who took an immediate liking to them. When he was presented with rosary beads, a walking stick, and drums that belonged to the 13th Dalai Lama, the boy claimed that all were his. They were also the eight bodily marks found on the Dalai Lamas, which were also on this boy. When it was established by the search party that this was the new Dalai Lama, he was removed from his home and taken to the Tibetan capital of Lhasa. He began his monastic education at the age of six, but was required to live away from his family. For the next 21 years, he would study all aspects of the multiple sects. At the age of 15, the Dalai Lama was forced to deal with the question of China and its desire for control over Tibet. In October of 1950, he assumed the role of Tibet's leader. This is the same year that the People's Republic of China entered into Tibet. In 1953, the Dalai Lama traveled to the Chinese capital of Beijing, looking to find a solution to the conflict. He hoped to explain the Tibetan people to the government of China. News of the trip terrified people in Tibet, who worried he might not return. To celebrate the Tibetan New Year, the Dalai Lama hosted a banquet inviting the leader of China, Mao Zedong. At the party, the Dalai Lama threw a pinch of tsapa into the air as an expression of goodwill. Mao took a pinch and threw it on the floor. At their last meeting, Mao told the Dalai Lama, I understand you very well, but of course, religion is poison. It has two great defects. It undermines the race, and secondly, it retards the progress of the country. Tibet and Mongolia have been both poisoned by it. These remarks stunned the Dalai Lama, affirming his belief that Mao was the enemy of Buddhism and trouble was on the way. In March of 1959, 
with the Chinese advancing farther into the bet, it became clear that the best thing for the Dalai Lama to do was to flee to Tibet and protect his people. The Dalai Lama and his traveling party faced a dangerous journey out of Lhasa, being hunted by the Chinese. They rested at night in small towns or monasteries. During the journey, the Dalai Lama began to find out about the horrors which were occurring to his people back home. The Dalai Lama eventually found his way to India, where he set up an exiled Tibetan government. Once in India, he looked to take care of the refugees that had followed him. There were schools set up so children could learn traditional language, history, and religion. He supported the refounding of 200 monasteries and nunneries in an attempt to preserve Tibetan Buddhist teachings and the Tibetan way of life. The Dalai Lama appeared at the United Nations in New York City in 1959, 1961, and 1965, looking to fight for the human rights of his people. He decided to form a democratic constitution based on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. By the mid-1960s, the decision was made that the Dalai Lama needed to get the message of Tibet's plight out to the world, and the best way for him to do this was to be a goodwill ambassador. His first trip was to Japan and Thailand. In 1973, the Dalai Lama made his first trip to the West on a six-week, 11-country tour of Europe. One of the motivating factors of the trip was the normalization of relations between China and the United States. The Dalai Lama had come to the realization that the U.S. had not been fighting for Tibet. Instead, they were fighting against communism in the People's Republic of China. On the trip, he met with the Pope, as well as his old friend Heinrich Herr, who acted as his tutor during the 1940s. In 1979, the Dalai Lama made his first visit to the United States. He was impressed with the freedom of expression and the warmth of the people. Despite these positive impressions, he was also shocked at the inadequate distribution of wealth. His overall impression of the United States was good, and he has returned to visit numerous times over the last 30 plus years. Starting in the 1980s, the Tibetan cause was getting a lot of international attention, and the Dalai Lama was gaining a large following. From the streets of India to London to Washington, D.C., there was a tremendous interest in the spiritual man and his cause. During this same time, 91 members of the United States Congress sent a letter to the Chinese president expressing their support for direct talks. During a trip, the Dalai Lama had a chance to meet with both the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury, meetings that were very, very positive. He also began to meet with other religious leaders across the world. In 1991, George Bush became the first United States President to meet with a Dalai Lama. Another meeting occurred between the Dalai Lama and then President Bill Clinton in 1994. Other meetings have followed in the subsequent years. In addition to meeting with international leaders, the Dalai Lama has published numerous titles in both English and Tibet, helping spread his message across the world through his writings. During the last two decades, the 14th Dalai Lama's role has enlarged from not only a spiritual leader of a people, but also a worldwide figure. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989 for his peaceful efforts to resolve the situation in Tibet. Support for Tibet has increased because of the attention of the Free Tibet movement all around the world. In 2005, the Dalai Lama was named one of Time Magazine's most influential people, and he was unanimously voted as an honorary citizen of Canada. In 2006, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for people performing an outstanding deed or act in service to the security, prosperity, and national interests of the United States of America. He joined the elite company of Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, and Mother Teresa to gain this distinction. The Dalai Lama also has a connection to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He has received an honorary doctoral degree and has visited the campus five times, with a planned sixth visit this coming May. The Dalai Lama has faced some controversy in recent years, mainly due to his unwillingness to criticize India's testing of nuclear weapons. Uh, critics have also suggested 
that conditions in feudal Tibet when he was leader were not ideal and that the serfdom that took place equaled slavery. It also should not be overlooked that the Tibetan penal code included corporal and capital punishment. But, to his credit, the Dalai Lama has condemned some of the ancient practices of Tibet, stating that he was looking to reform the country before the Chinese take over. In a day and age where Western society celebrates individuals for materialistic accomplishments, it is remarkable that the Dalai Lama has gained such a strong following across the world. Tenzin Gyatso's role was to lead the people of Tibet in both a spiritual and governmental role. Yet the Chinese takeover has vastly shifted his role from one focused on internal Tibet and instead on the rest of the world. What is happening in Tibet is a continuing tragedy, but it has allowed the world to learn and experience this incredible man.